Hey guys, Omar here for another Fuji X-T20 tutorial. This one goes out to everyone who has the camera, wants to learn a little bit more. Today we're going to talk about the EVF and the, oh, the EVF and the LCD. For those of you that uh, just stumbled upon this channel, I'm a professional photographer in New Jersey and I have found joy in shooting again with the Fuji after I picked up the Fuji X-T20. I found I wasn't bringing my pro cameras anywhere. I wanted to have a camera that would be with me all the time and bring the joy back to shooting. And the Fuji X-T20 has done that awesomely. Uh, next week we're going to New Orleans and uh, the true test is how will it be for a vacation camera? Because I used to lug the huge DSLR, three lenses, huge bag, and just lug that everywhere. And now it's gonna be just this, the 18 to 55 kit lens and the Fuji X-T20. Uh, in the beautiful city of New Orleans. So I'll make sure that I share that with you guys. But for now, let's uh, show you the back of your camera. It's important in any situation to have a proper knowledge of your cockpit, of your control center. <laughs> and the back of the camera and the EVF gives you all the information you need. So I'm gonna go through it with you, okay? All right guys, so let's start talking about the EVF LCD display. Now, first of all, you can actually change the back display by hitting this display back button. If you hit it once, you get a nice clear picture where nothing's on there. If you hit it again, you get a bunch of information. And if you hit it a third time, you get a bunch of little icons that are around, okay? Now, one thing to note, if you're in this second view, if you look in the viewfinder and have this, this mode, you won't see this in the viewfinder. When you look in the viewfinder, you actually see the typical EVF view, so you can take a photograph. Now you can customize, if you don't see some of the things I see on this, just go to your menu and go to the wrench and say screen setup. And if you scroll all the way to the bottom, it says display custom settings. And then you can actually check what you wanna see and what you don't wanna see. Now, when you open up your Fuji manual, this is what you see that gives you information on what everything is. Now, when you get a new camera, you know, like this actually looks like this to your brain, doesn't it? You're like, oh, I gotta go through it. What are all these little symbols mean? Now, I love going through it. I love seeing what everything is and, and figuring it out, which is why I'm doing this video for you. But if you're someone that hates this craziness, I'm gonna simplify it, okay? We're gonna take all those numbers away and what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna use Omar's view. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through the icons the way I use them. The ones I look at the most to the ones I look at the least. The first thing we'll look at is everything that's operational on the camera. Exposure, focus, camera behavior, video, and flash. Okay, so let's start with the first one. Operational. Can you even take a photo? So you have to make sure that everything's squared away on your LCD. So the first thing is the battery life. And in the manual, it gives you an icon sort of uh, translation on how much battery there is. If you have one little, uh, little thing left, uh, you only have 20% battery. Right now I have three, so I'm good to go. 80% full, baby. All right, the icon at the top is your number of frames you have available. This is about, this is how many pictures you can take. Right now, mine says 138. If you see 9999, that just means you have more photographs than 9999. So this is the capacity of your memory card. Next, your camera will not work if it's overheating. Make sure you check there's a little temperature warning that'll come on. Number two exposure. This is probably the thing I'm checking most is what is my camera doing as far as exposure goes. So here's where to look. First is at the bottom of the LCD you have all your vitals. The first one is your shutter speed. Now just note your shutter speed is written without the one, the fraction. There, so this is uh, one over 12,000. I, I love how Fuji puts their like you know a super top shutter speed on there to show off. <laughs> we have our aperture we have our ISO. So that's the triangle. I also like how they show off with a super high ISO. <laughs> they put big numbers there, which is great. So those three I'm always checking and you can see those on the bottom of the camera. If they are in blue, like they are my LCD here, that means that I have them in a manual mode where I'm controlling them. If you see them in white at the bottom, that means that that is probably an auto mode for, for one of those. So right now I have them in a manual mode so I can change them myself. Awesome, the little meter on the side. So this little meter on the side over here tells you your exposure. If you notice, my needle is way low. 
if I start to change my exposure, it will come up. So I'm always looking at that needle to see what my exposure is. But what's great about having an ele electronic viewfinder is there's a preview of the exposure anyway. So you know if the picture's too bright or if it's too dark. But this little exposure compensation shows you your, um, your proper exposure or where you are, okay? Next, this is exposure compensation, but you'll only see that on the playback menu. So if you shoot a picture and play it back, uh, at the bottom, you'll see the exposure compensation. You see it there at the bottom, it says uh, minus one. So the, uh, you'll only see that on your playback of photographs, not if you're doing exposure compensation on the fly. If you're doing exposure compensation on the fly, you'll actually just see the needle up and down. Oh, the histogram. So the histogram, if you look in your manual, you'll see it, it explains the histogram in there. Histogram's fantastic. It's this little graph over here. And what that does, uh, let me lower this so you can see it. It tells you if your image is underexposed. So right now, um, the histogram is showing that it's too dark in here. If you start to brighten up, your histogram will move, which is cool. Okay, so your histogram helps with exposure. It also tells you if your whites are too bright. So you, could, you can't really see it in the video here, but if they're too bright, you're gonna get what's called clipping, which means anything that's very, very white and bright, um, if you're clipping, that means there's gonna be no data there to recover, so you have to be careful. So we use the histogram a lot in photography if we're shooting um, digital, okay? Uh, the little, that's your, um, the symbol at the bottom that you see, that is your, um, what's it called? Uh, Fuji calls it your photometry. <laughs> it's kind of like your meter. Exposure lock. So if you hold down the auto exposure, you'll see this little blue thing that lights up at the bottom. Uh, that right there is just tells me that my exposure is locked. Okay, so you can lock your exposure on a certain part of your photograph. And in the corner over here, you have a little dynamic range. And this will be automatically on 100. This is how much uh, detail you see in your shadows and your uh, highlights. So if you have an, a scene that's very, very um, sunny, but there's some shade in there, you should probably turn that up to 200 or 400. Now you can leave that on auto as well, and it'll go between 100 and 200, but it won't jump to 400 on auto, just so you know. Next, focus, focus. All right, our focus items. This is the next thing I'm checking, is my uh, stuff in focus. So the little um, square in the middle, right there, the little square, that is our focus point. Bottom corner, we have all our vitals. So let me show you that. For focus, there's a couple of things you'll see. So the first one is what focus mode are you in? So the little dial in front of your camera, if you switch it around, you'll see that that changes here. See that very small? If I switch it again, you'll see that it switches to manual right there. That, that's manual focus, autofocus continuous, autofocus single shot. The next thing is you'll see a little um, flashing white dot if you're not in focus, okay, so that if you are in focus, it'll turn green. If you are in continuous focus, you will see a parentheses or brackets around the focus area. When it turns green, that means it has locked focus on something, okay? That's, that also brings us to the, that AFL button. AFL means that it has locked focus on something. If you can't focus, which like, by the way, I. If I try to focus right now, oops, if I try to focus, I get a little red warning. That's an autofocus warning on the back of your screen. Autofocus and manual focus. This is my favorite thing if you're in single shot mode. So if you notice over here in the corner, it says AFMF. This just means if I half hold the shutter and I turn my lens, it will give me an automatic zoom on where I'm trying to focus. I have another video where I tell you how to turn that on, my manual focus video. Next up, we have at the top. So if you notice the top, there's two. The first one is zoom to focus. So if I push the rear control dial, I'll see that little symbol come up. That means you are zoomed in. That's not what your picture is gonna be. The other one is a depth of field preview. Um, now I actually assigned one of my buttons to be the depth of field preview and I tried it. I don't really see a reason to have a depth of view preview because you can actually have depth of field, uh, depth of view preview uh, right in here. 
So I'm not sure why that's there, maybe for special types of lenses, uh, but that symbol is up there. Next at the bottom for focus, you have a distance scale. This tells you, tells you uh, distance on how far things are focused and also depth of field with a little blue uh, icon. Next, my what are you gonna do? This is what the camera is gonna do, okay? So I call it my what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do, camera? So here are the things that fit in that category. The first thing is what shooting mode is the camera in? in on my slide, it's in manual. But if you notice on my camera over here, I have, it, there's a little A there. That means it's in aperture priority mode. If I switch my lens to uh, automatic, which I'm about to do now, you'll see a P there. So that tells you you're in program mode. So that tells you your shooting mode. Next, what's the camera gonna do? At the top, the camera tells you what size you're shooting your images at, okay? So if you go to the IQ menu, which is the top one, you have image size, there's an L, and you can also pick from a bunch of different sizes, aspect ratios, sorry. For example, 3-2 is your normal like four by six photo, 35 millimeter normal. 16 by nine is like a long movie, one by one is a square. So you can do that in any sizes. And then it tells you how many photos you get for that. If you see an L, that means that your image size is large. If you go to M, you'll see a little M there, okay? Now above, you will see raw. So this means that I'm shooting, right here it tells me I'm shooting raw and medium. Image quality, N for normal, F for fine, and if you're doing raw and JPEG, uh, that will show up. If you're, doing, if you're shooting raw and JPEG, I like to shoot fine and raw, and you'll see that as an F there. The one thing it doesn't show you to be careful with is the aspect ratio. So you actually have to make sure that you, for example, if you're on one one, like you're shooting square photos, it doesn't show you that anywhere. So be careful with that. Okay, what are you gonna do with white balance? So in white balance, if I put uh, auto up there in the corner, I see nothing. But if you change it to something like the sun, you actually will see the white balance there. The other one's the film simulation. So if I'm in classic Chrome baby, you'll see classic Chrome right there. So now I have all these symbols in the corner. Okay, so this is for the shooting mode. The, it's called the drive. So the drive is this uh, uh, dial at the upper left. Right now it's on the S, which is the single. You won't see anything, but if I go, if I switch it to continuous low, you'll see a little symbol there in the corner. Continuous high. You also have the bracketing will come up. Here we have a bracket. If you switch to a bracket, you'll see that this turned yellow up here. Now there's a reason for that. This is a film bracket, which will shoot three JPEGs. So it turns this yellow so that warns you that you're not gonna get raw for the most part. If I switch to the next bracket, I have that one as an exposure bracket and this turns normally to raw. Um, so be careful, it will turn yellow to let you know that it's gonna be JPEG. Next, what are you gonna do camera? What are you gonna do? One is your screen locked. If you hold down your menu button for a while, it will actually lock your camera there, okay? And you'll see the little lock symbol in the corner. So if you try to do it, if you try to switch anything, it will be locked. So you have to hold it down again to unlock it. Okay, that little warning right there that's turned on, that means that your sound is for flash and sound is set to off. So all you need to do is go to your user settings and scroll down to sound and flash and you can turn that on. Another one is what kind of shutter are you using? You won't see anything if you have an electronic shutter on. So if you go to your camera and you ask for shutter type, if you put electronic shutter, it wants to tell you electronic shutter ES there. Timer, you have a timer. If you set a timer for 10 seconds, you'll see that there. Next, video. Let's switch this to video mode. If you go to video mode, all of a sudden you'll see at the top a couple of things. The first thing is the quality of your video. What is the quality of your video? You can change that if you go to the camera and here you can just pick from a bunch of them. If you pick something, you'll see it at the top. The other thing is it tells you a time of how much recording time you have left. So I can record for 20, 29 minutes and 44 seconds in that mode. Once you start recording, you'll get like a countdown timer. 
The virtual horizon, I use that, I put that in the video. You could use that for photographs, of course, but I, I put that in video because it's good to have straight video. And in the corner, if you plug in a, um, a mic, is something into the mic jack, it will ask you, is it a microphone or is it a shutter release? And last but not least, flash. I don't use a lot of flash so far on the camera, but here are a couple of things that you should look for. Number one is, do you have TTL lock? TTL is your flash, like an auto exposure for your flash. The camera thinks about how much flash it's going to produce. But the problem with TTL is depending on where the camera meters, it could give you different flashes. With TTL lock, you can lock. If you got a good exposure on the first one, like the camera got it right, you can lock that last exposure. Over here, this tells you the TTL, uh, if, how much flash exposure you have. Are your, this, if you know about flash, you know TTL um, a flash exposure can be over or under. Do you want the flash to be a little brighter or do you want the flash to be a little darker? All right, guys, there you have it. Another quick tutorial on the Fuji X-T20. I hope that helps someone out there. Those of you that are too lazy, read the manual.